What's up, YouTube? I'm going to show you how I turn this into this. Let's get started. All right, let's start this Bat Cave Keyser Bar build. I started off by putting a piece of OSB on top and measuring it out to figure out the size that I wanted for the bar top. I cut that to size, made sure there was a little bit of an overhang so that it would fit around the box that I'm creating. Now I pop off the hinges. I'm removing these hinges because what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a collar to make this taller so that it will fit my kegs and my CO2 tank inside. Then I'm just going to reattach those spring loaded hinges to the collar that I create. And I'm using 2x8s and 2x4s to create the collar. I needed that an offset in order to create enough space that I could fit all of my kegs inside and the bar height that I wanted and make sure that the, the one keg that was sitting on the shelf would fit. I created pocket screws for all these and then I doubled up and glued them as well. Probably overkill, but I wanted to make sure that this was rock solid. This Craig jig I'm using here is fantastic. Makes it really easy to do pocket screws. I like pocket screws because not only do they pull the boards directly together the way I want them, but they're hidden well. And for a setup like this, it keeps the inside of those walls smooth. Again, gluing and screwing on these. Just want to make sure that the top of this is really rock solid. I put the lid on just to confirm the measurements and make sure that the lid on the freezer door is sealing. Now to seal the top of the freezer to the collar itself, I used caulk. I also put pocket screws on the inside of the collar so I could screw it directly down into the freezer to secure it in place. Probably overkill, but I also used caulk on all the seams on the inside of the collar. Not taking any chances. I put this weight on top to make sure that there was pressure on the back seal when it was compressed when I attached the hinges. I'm not so much worried about the size in the front because they'll have the weight of the rest of the bar top on it to push down on that seal. Now for the fun part. I'm making the actual box that the freezer slides into the back of. This is the bulk build of the Keyser bar. The simplicity of the design technique that I went with is fantastic. All I'm doing is making a giant box that I can slide the freezer into the back of. The Keyser bar top sits on top of the door on the collar that I built. So this is just a simple frame that I'm going to decorate, trim out, and make it look the way I want it to look. The advantage of this is that it's super easy to do. You're just making the frame and decorating it, and then you slide the freezer into the back. Because it's not load bearing, I was able to use light, thin plywood for this. The whole thing ended up actually being heavier than I expected, but I worked that out later with some sliders. Since originally I had this sitting on carpet, I just used a bunch of carpet sliders glued to the bottom. Even though this is thin plywood, I went ahead and screwed all these in to give it rigidity. This part isn't bearing any weight, but I still want it to feel solid when I'm done. This is the brains of the operation. That is the Inkbird temperature controller. What this does is checks the temperature inside the freezer and cycles the freezer compressor on and off. You don't want this thing actually freezing your beer. You want to set a temperature that's above freezing. And this is the unit that actually maintains the temperature inside there to keep your beer at drinking temperature instead of at freezer temperature. So what I did was I cut out a hole in the plywood and then I had to make a bracket to offset it because it was too deep to actually sit inside the unit itself on the plywood without some sort of support.
It actually ended up being about an inch thick that I needed it to sit through because that unit is fairly deep and I didn't want to take up a whole bunch of space inside of the keyser bar just for that controller. I decided to do a coffin top style on the top of my keyser bar. So I started working on the coffin top. This went through a couple of changes and modifications as I designed it because I wasn't 100% sure on exactly how I wanted it to look. I just did a couple sketches and started putting some pieces together and seeing how they actually looked on top. But I knew that I wanted this to have a coffin top. One, to get it higher and make it look more like a bar where you would pour a beer. And two, to keep it high enough that my kids couldn't mess with the taps. Time for some sanding. I realized that while I worked on the coffin top, I could go ahead and get some paint going on this body. So we started to sand. While I was sanding it, <laughs> these screws started to catch. So I sunk those in a little bit deeper so they would stop ripping up my sandpaper. While I get this ready for prepping paint, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like and subscribe. I am still trying to figure out what I wanna do for the design on the front of this thing, but I know that the backdrop's gonna be black so I went ahead and started rolling out the first couple coats of black paint on this to get the base done. When you're flying by the seat of your pants, sometimes you end up redoing things and realizing there's a better way, which is exactly what happened to me on this trim. After laying out that first one, I realized that the edges weren't perfect, I wasn't getting my good 45s, and it didn't line up with how I wanted it on the box. After that, I redid the frame on both sides on the actual case so that I could measure and cut each piece and get it positioned exactly the way I wanted it instead of trying to make the frame on the ground and then place it on the box. I still glued everything to the frame to make sure that it was solid, but I realized I didn't actually need to screw the pieces into each other. I just needed them attached to the box itself. This was how I went about doing the rest of the trim for the three sides that face out. Didn't really do anything about the back side because it goes against the wall, so that's just bare freezer. One change I also made, as you'll see, I realized I wanted that trimmed overlay so that not only did it flow together on the corners better, but then I could nail it into each other and make sure it was all solid and looked like one piece when I was done painting it. Now I start messing with the design on the front. I had sketched out a couple, I mean a dozen different ways that I wanted the top of this thing to look, but I wanted the front of the bar not only to feel bat-like, but to tie into how I was making the tap handles. So I came up with a vision in my head of how I wanted the tap handles to look and I knew I was going to put a bat symbol on the front of this, so I needed an opening for that. And that was this initial layout that I did. After I cut these pieces, glued them, and stepped back and looked at it, I decided to add more because it looked too plain, even though I had the basic tap handle shape to tie in. I was keeping all this stuff angular because with this bat theme, that's how I wanted it to look. And it was actually a lot easier than trying to do a bunch of round stuff. This, on the other hand, was not. The main piece on the front of this, the bat symbol, had to be good. Luckily, I took my time on this and I got this thing done the exact way I wanted it on the first attempt. Patience pays off sometimes. And with this being a decorative piece, I busted out the Dremel, smoothed off all the edges and made sure it looked perfect. Because you can't have the bat symbol looking sloppy on your bat bar. When you're doing a project and you're shooting from the hip, you're gonna redo stuff. That's just a fact of life. So after the first run on the coffin top setup, I completely redesigned it and started over. I'm actually much happier with the way that it turned out as opposed to how I was starting to do it because this one's a lot more solid, has more space and works better for putting a menu up in the back, which you'll see I do later. I also decided to make it a little bit bigger because I wanted to have good airflow going through it. I put in a fan later on to keep the coffin top cool, to cool the beer lines, to prevent foamy pores. 
This is another part of the project that was very cumbersome, getting the angle set up properly on that top piece. The reason why I'm not just screwing this top piece in, you'll see later on, is because I want this to be removable. So if I ever need access to the lines or to switch out my shanks up top, I can. The build is underway. Check out part two of the Back Keyser Bar build.